Well, Brett, Jason, congratulations. It is now down to the two of you guys battling it out for the title of Forge and Fire Champion and a check for $10,000. In keeping up with the ninja theme, we're gonna have you guys go back to your home forges and build a historic Japanese weapon. We want you to build this. The Ninjato Sword. The Ninjato Sword traces its roots back to 15th century Japan. This short, single-edged blade was lightweight and easily concealable, making it a weapon of choice for stealthy ninjas to covertly assassinate a target behind enemy lines. This iconic sword of the Shadow Warriors can still be seen today wielded by Scorpion in the 2021 movie Mortal Kombat. So guys, good luck. We'll see you in four days. Let's go. My name is Jason Floyd. I'm from Amarillo, Texas. My friends would probably describe me as pretty soft-spoken, really hard-working, and really family-dedicated. I'm here to forge some steel. All right, all right. So I'm stretching this billet out, trying to move as fast as I can. I've got this little sword where I want it. Now it's time to quench. This is kind of the moment of truth. The worst case scenario, the blade snaps, that I can't fix it, and I'm starting over. OK, you ready. So I'm coming out of the quench, but I see a huge bend in the blade. I'm thinking, crap, I'm not going to get this thing out of here. If I let the hammer up off of this thing and it's still got a big bend in it, I'm going to have to quench again. Oh, yeah. I think I got it straightened out in time. It's got a little bitty bend to a tiny. Could have been a whole lot worse. All reality, I'm, I'm really pretty pleased with where I'm at. We're going to polish up the copper, the hibaki, and do a patina on the guard. I kind of like the antique-ish look. Everything looks really good with it, so we're going to go with it just like it is and get ready to test this thing. I am finished. I'm relieved. My name is Brett South. I'm 40 years old, and I've been blacksmithing for about five years. I am a full-time police officer. I don't really use a whole lot of bladesmithing in my line of work, but I have made knives for everybody on my shift. It's a good break from my day job. Pressing down and my welds fail. I've just got to get something made so that I can move on with this build. Started over with some low-layer Damascus. I'm going to use some blue dye on the blade, and then I'll use my calipers to mark out exactly where I want my bevels to start. Thinking I may go ahead and heat treat I'm nervous about quenching and the fact that I've never quenched anything this long. We'll see what happens, fingers crossed. I don't hear anything, no pings, no tings, no nothing. Everything looks good. Came out perfectly straight and tomorrow it'll be a sword. I'm not exactly sure what a traditional handle wrap is, so I'm gonna go with one that I think I can pull off and hope for the best. Done. I am excited about the sword. It was, it was fun to build and it was a challenge and I'm glad the challenge is over. Batesmiths, welcome to the kill test. It's time to find out how lethal your weapons are. To find it out, I'll deliver some lethal blows on this big carcass. Brett, you're up first. You ready for this? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right, Brett, let's talk about your ninjato sword. I like the weight that you have with your weapon. With stealth movements, you need something that makes you fast when you're moving around with that. I like the wrap that you have there. I appreciate the stingray, but it's a little bit on the girthier side. I appreciate the Damascus pattern with that deeper etch, and every cut was deep. And overall, sir, it'll kill. Thank you. Jason, your turn, so you ready? Yes, sir, get her done. All right, Jason, let's talk about your ninjata sword here. First up, the handle construction. It is also on the girthier side, but the wrap that you have here is smooth. There are no hot points. At the same time, it's easy to control and hold. Now, I appreciate all those layers that you have there. Now your edge and tip, razor sharp. 
very deep cuts on every stab on this pig carcass. Overall, sir, your ninjata sword, it will kill. Thank you. Next up, the strength test. Ben? Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test, the bamboo forest chop. Remember, this test is all about what happens to your swords and not what happens to the bamboo. Brett, you're up first, you ready? Yes, sir. Bamboo is one of the tests that I was afraid they were going to do because it can just wreak all kind of havoc on your blade. And here it is. Hi, Brett. The edge is just like when you handed it to me. The blade is still straight. The fit up to the habaki here is not quite perfect. There's a big old step down here, and, and these really should be in line with the habaki top and bottom. Your handle is big, but it's comfortable, easy to hold on to, so nice job. Thank you. All right, Jason, you're up. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, cool. All right, Jason, your edge is untouched by the bamboo, as is the straightness of your sword. It's still dead straight. Habaki fit up is mostly there. It's just a little bit of a shoulder at the top. Your handle, subtly oversized, but comfortable enough to swing. All in all, nice job. Thank you. All right, Bladesmiths, welcome to the sharpness test. The banner slice. To find out how sharp your swords are, I'm gonna cut through this banner. Brett, you're up. You ready for this? Ready. All right, Brett, first up, love the balance. It is easy to wield, feels good in the hand. The edge is like hot knife through butter. Overall, sir, you will cut. Thank you. All right, Jason, you ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Jason, it's a very light, stealthy weapon. It's easy to handle, and it slices nicely. Overall, sir, it will cut. Thank you, sir. Well, guys, from where I stand, it looks pretty close, but I don't make decisions, the judges do, and they need a moment. So, gentlemen, I'm gonna ask that you please step off the forge floor and give us a minute. Guys, from where I stand, this looks about as close as it gets, but you guys do have a decision to make. So, Doug, what do you think? Both weapons are executed beautifully. They're both deadly. When it comes to the handle, though, they're both girthy handles but I'll have to give that to Brett because I like the craftsmanship of the stingray and the wrap. Ben, what about you? Jason's blade, the fit up of the habaki is pretty much in line, whereas Brett's is a huge step between the habaki and the, and the blade. Dave, where do you stand? Jason's blade, the pattern that he's got going down that blade, the profile, the entire blade just has that vibe. So Brett's blade, he's got a nice pattern on there, but if you look at it, you can see a lot of sanding and file marks. Dave, you made your decision? Yeah. Ben? Yes, I am. How about you, Doug? Yes. All right, guys, we'll call them in. They're getting ready to announce the Forge and Fire champion. My freaking stomach is in my throat. All right, guys, the judges have made a decision. Today's Forge and Fire champion is... Jason, congratulations. Well, Brett, I want to say thank you for letting us watch you work, but unfortunately, your time as competition has ended. I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the Forge floor. Good job, bro. It came down to just losing to a better smith. So no regrets, made it farther than I thought I would. When I go home, the first thing I'm probably going to do is kiss my wife and daughter, and then probably take a nap. Jason, you just won $10,000 in the title of Fortune Fire Champion. I'm a canister waiting to go off, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, I just won Fortune Fire. Thank you all a bunch. I had a blast. Coming from round one, having a massive failure. Up here at the tip, you've got a crack. 
being able to pipe back and make it all the way, it's been a hell of a journey. I'd do it again in a minute. I can't believe I'm actually the Forged and Fire champion. 